Our next speaker is Michael, and he will talk to us about inductors. Inductors. start, can I get a volunteer? Somebody hopefully close to me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah, right, cool. So what I have here for you guys, you can't see, these are three uh, watch cell batteries, little tiny 1.5 volt batteries you've probably seen. They're fairly innocuous, you can just grab, hold on to this for me. Okay. Alright, you're good? Yeah, Alright, cool, you're right. All right. So, um, doesn't hurt? Not yet. Okay, so uh, does anyone know what this is? Oh, a pen. A pen. Actually, it's not a pen. It's one of these guys. It's a shocking pen. The kind of pen you get as a prank and you give it to your friend and say, hey, you want to borrow a pen? They're like, sure. Oh, ow. Um, they hurt quite a bit. And uh, they have all kinds of different brands. They have shocking pens, staplers. My friend said they had a shocking box cutter once, laser pointer, which would be really funny here. But um, anyway, so these guys are, uh, are, are fairly painful, actually. It's, it's kind of a, a harmless prank, but it, it hurts. And the thing is, um, inside this pen is the same three batteries I just gave to him. And those, you said, don't hurt. So if you can just grab this pen real quick and push the top. <laughs> just kidding, All right, thanks a lot. So obviously, there's something about this pen that is very, uh, very unique. Something that can take the energy inside these batteries and deliver it in such a way that it hurts. So my name is Michael, and today I'm going to be presenting about inductors, which is kind of the secret behind how this pen works. So I took the pen apart. I actually bought two of them. This is the one I kept. I took it apart, and I got this. It's uh, a little circuit board, which is this little green guy right here. Uh, these are the three batteries, that's part of the plastic battery housing. And then there's this big black box right here. And that's our inductor. And that's kind of the secret for how this thing works, and that's what I'm, be, what I'm going to be talking about today. But uh, before we get to that, I need to give you a little bit of background on electricity and magnetism. I'm sure you guys have heard a lot of this before, just a quick run through so we're on the same page as far as terminology goes. You've probably heard of voltage, you've heard of current. Voltage, represented by a V, is the amount of push you give your electrons or your charge through your surface. And then current, represented with an I, I didn't make up the letters, don't ask me. Uh, current is the represented, uh, is the speed at which the current moves, at which the charge moves, I'm sorry. So I like to think of it with the example of like a car. Whereas if your car is stalled out on the road, if you're pushing it, you're applying a voltage, and then as it moves, it has a current. And as you can guess, certain surfaces, say if you're on dry pavement, a small amount of voltage will give you a lot of current. This is the case in things like uh, conductors like copper or aluminum or whatever, any kind of metal. Whereas if you're on sand and your car is stalled out, you have to apply a much larger voltage to get a current. And this is the example, say, with human skin, which is why you need a much higher voltage to get through my skin, which is why the batteries didn't hurt you at all, because they couldn't even break your skin. Okay, so uh, the last term here is magnetism, which is measured in Tesla and is represented by the letter B. You guys have probably seen this picture a lot before. It's kind of a, uh, a drawing of the magnetic fields from the north and south pole of the magnet. Basically, all you need to know about magnetic fields is that they can exist inside of space, and they're sort of a property of our universe. It's just kind of the way things work. So I have an example here, uh, a set of fairly powerful magnets, and as you can see, they, uh, they attract each other through my nose, and, and the magnetic field exists between them. It's just something, a property of, these, uh, of our universe that we can create magnetic fields. And there's a number of ways to, to create them. We can create them in a uh, permanent magnet and fairly uh, and numerous other ways. So, how does this all tie together? What are, what are the rules and how does everything work? Well, unlike people like in Jesus' algorithm, where you get to kind of make up the rules and say, we have a map of n number of nodes and everything's connected, we electrical engineers don't get to make up the rules. We have to follow the rules that are already written for us. Basically, the rules of the properties of our universe. And uh, to demonstrate, let's see here, I'm wearing the right shirt today. So, uh, these are Maxwell's equations. And us nerds like to put these on our t-shirts because they make us feel cool. So this is basically four equations that define how electricity and magnetism interacts in our universe. I didn't write these rules, they're already here, so all we can do as engineers is hope to find a way to exploit these rules to do what we want to do. So I'm not going to go into the details of this, it's obviously very complicated, it involves a lot of calculus and differential equations and all that kind of mess. But I can boil it all down to... Here? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I go back to uh, here, all right. So we can boil it down to two relationships, or two uh, properties of inductors. 
So, um, actually, before I go to this real quick, just in case uh, you guys didn't clue in for the previous picture, an inductor is basically a coil of wire. <laughs> I, don't, I forgot to mention that earlier. So here we have a piece of wire, and now we have an inductor wrapped around my finger. It's as simple as that. It's just a coil of wire. And when you coil this wire, you're basically manipulating these rules to change the properties of this material. And of course, how are they changed? Well, they're changed in these two ways. So there are two main relationships here. The first one is that the amount of magnetic field, the strength of the magnetic field inside your inductor is proportional to the current traveling through your inductor. So I have this indicator using thick letters as being like big things and thin letters as being small things. So a small amount of current, represented with our I, gives you a small amount of magnetic field, whereas a large current gives you a large magnetic field. And the other relationship is that the voltage across your inductor, so how hard it's pushing, is proportional to the rate of change of magnetic field inside the conductor, or inside the inductor, sorry. So here I have a inductor with a large magnetic field going through it, and then as that magnetic field drops, your voltage is going to increase. This isn't very intuitive, I don't anticipate it being, uh, this is just how things are in our world, this is how things work. But it's because they work like this that we can exploit them and do really cool things. So let's go back to our pen example. I uh, drew a little labels here. Um, we have our inductor, our big black box right here. And we have the pen. These are the two contacts on the pen. Uh, the thumb part of the top and the body of the pen is also metal. And then you have this little green board right here, which is uh, a switch. All that green board does when you hold the button down is going to flip current on and off really fast to our inductor. So I redrew it here in a little more uh, simple to understand way. So here you see a coil of wire. There's actually two inductors here. We have them side by side. And they're actually linked in such a way that the magnetic field traveling through one goes entirely through the other as well. So here we have our switch, our little green board. You flick it on, and let's say when you first turn it on, the switch is going to run current through the first inductor. This is going to build up a magnetic field inside it. Because as we said, our first property is the magnetic field through our inductor is proportional to the amount of current traveling through it. Okay? So then the switch turns off, as pictured here. When you flip the switch off, the magnetic field is going to start to die down. It's going to decrease, because as the current drops inside this inductor, the magnetic field has to drop as well. So what's this guy going to do? Well, this inductor sitting here thinking, huh, I had this magnetic field inside me, and now it's decreasing. So as we said with the second property, the voltage across the inductor is going to be proportional to the change in magnetic field, sorry, the rate of change of magnetic field inside it, which I've drawn here. So when this guy sees the magnetic field is dropping, it's going to generate some kind of voltage. Now what's cool about this is that this voltage is proportional to the rate of change of magnetic field. And here we just turn the magnetic field from basically on to off in a split second. So we're going to generate a much larger voltage out than we put in. And in a nutshell, that's how this thing works. Now of course, we don't limit it to funny little pranks you can play on your phone. <coughs> this is, an inductor is useful anywhere you need to get a higher voltage out than you put in. For example, the fluorescent lighting over there runs at about 250 volts usually. When it started up, it, when it starts up, it's running at like 500 volts. Yet your wall socket only puts out 115. Uh, another example would be, say, with the flash in your camera. Flash bulb's going to take 30, 40 volts. The battery you put in there only supplies maybe 3.5, depending on the type of camera. Uh, other example is defibrillator machines. When you have to, you know, run the paddles together and shock somebody, you have to get a much higher voltage out than you put in. And so they're very useful in that regard. So I think it's really cool that we, that we live in a day and age when the top minds in our world can come together and find ways to exploit the laws of physics that just happen to exist to pull fun pranks on our friends. So that's how inductors work, and now I'll open to questions. <laughs> Thank you. Quick question. Where can I get that shirt? Uh, the coop sells them, and the other coop sells them as well.